Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. So, topic of today, <laughs> how to increase your value both as a player and as a person. Okay, so... We're going to break down to small subcategories in terms of how to be increasing the value off the pitch, okay? Because that's have will have a big effect on on the pitch as well, okay? All right. I'll lay it up to you, Patrick, okay? What's the most important thing that you, in your experience, uh, as a 26, uh, as a 25-year-old, turning 26 soon, okay? Um, what's the most important value that you've picked up so far in life so uh, the first seven years of your life you're absorbing very much from your environment and these first years of your life can determine if you're picking the right habits picking the right uh, attitude picking the right uh, values or not of course you don't have basically any control over what you absorb it's mostly up to your environment and your parents. So I would say that the biggest uh, value you can actually give to yourself is to identify your bad experiences, bad beliefs and bad habits when you're older and just to fix them one by one. And uh, this comes down to subconscious, subconscious mind. So it's uh, a bit difficult to do this uh, without any expertise uh, help or without uh, diving very deep into this topic. So I would say to people to, when you're ready, take control over your own mind. But first you need to get the knowledge to be able to, to fix it. A hundred percent. But I would say that half the battle is awareness. Once you build the awareness as well as that, that's then you can implement plan in terms of what action plan that you need to do to kind of tackle it one by one and that's how and that's how you can regain control of sub, your subconscious mind definitely definitely and uh, i can add from my experience that uh, when i was 18 i identified my bad beliefs and i just fixed them i just wrote uh, down on a list my bad beliefs that i'm having like for example uh, i'm not social enough or I'm not, uh, I'm not standing out for myself. So I mm. wrote things like that on a piece of paper and I was just eliminating them one by one. A lot of people kind of wait for something traumatic to happen or for something to, um, or like an event where they're not happy where they are, um, where the pain of um, stagnation overpowers the pain of change. And and that's why they're like, okay, I'm sick of where I am, or I'm not happy with where I am. Or um, what I'm doing is not getting me anywhere. Or um, and this is why a lot of people, um, not a lot of people, can get out of that autopilot mode where they're working nine to five again and again, living for the weekend, drinking, and then they splash all the money and then again and then again and then they look back and they're like oh I've wasted five six years of my life um living my youth or living the yolo life um and the kind not a lot of people um have that acceptance and i think part of that is because they're not willing to kind of cast their ego aside because they're not willing to accept that they've gone wrong no one likes to be told they've gone wrong Okay, no, and no one likes to be told that um they are going astray. They're not going in the right path, um because they're thinking they don't want to accept that they wasted so much time because time is such a priceless value, um and that's why I was saying that awareness only will only come if you put your ego to the side. That's from my, and that's from my experience as well. And I can also tell you an example from my family. So my Norwegian grandmother, she's uh, 90, 91 years old now, and uh, she's taking the pills to help her with the traumas she had in the childhood. And uh, you know what my dad said to me? 
he said uh, mm. he's not feeling sorry for her. So he said that she had all her life to sort her traumas out. And he said that uh, there is a point in life uh, where you have to sit down and analyze what what's wrong with you and fix it. Because no one will come to you and will uh, say, hey, you have problems here, I will fix it for you. No worries. Mm. No, you need mm. to identify this yourself. 100%. No one owes you anything. Like they say, because um, for one, everyone's got their own problems to deal with anyway. So who are you to think that people are coming to you and have to change, do that for you? It's ignorance in a sense. So, um, and like I said, no one knows you better than yourself. So no one else is better to change or make the changes but yourself. Not a therapist, not a, not a, like a psychoanalysis or whatever it is really but they can give you the tools to help you but only you know what's best for you and you can do the trial and error and stuff like that but again anyone can give you the tools but it's up to you what you want to do with it 100 percent. so uh the next uh the next one i can say uh, have higher standards put yourself in bigger rooms so uh it's many many times you get absorbed by the environment you are surrounded with. Mm -hmm. So like you, you see people, you see ambitious people, you see they are, they are there, but they are mm. absorbed by their environment and they are just, just getting lost. And I think part of that is because you can't expect to develop and grow in an environment where you're the smartest in the room. And again, it's part to do with ego. A lot of people want to be the big dog in the room. But I'm sat there thinking, yeah, you're a big dog in a small pond. You're not a big dog in a, in a big ocean where you, where you see all the big dogs, if that makes sense. And a lot of people are afraid of competition. A lot of people are afraid of not being the main man. A lot of people are like, and it's all got to do with the ego. And um, part of that, like some certain aspect, of, like, a good healthy ego is good to kind of like, to kind of give you confidence. But if you have an ego in fear, it can be a big detriment to your um, progression in life. So I always say, like, I'll obviously have mainly have people um, that are above you or the same level as you. So same level you can compete, and then above you, you can get, you can get inspired. So, yeah, yeah, the room that you're in, has a big aspect and a big factor of your development, 100%. So the next thing to increase your value is uh, body language. So I have a story. Uh, I read a book uh, about uh, Ronaldo and it was written there that he has some aura. Like people are saying that when they are close to him, they are feeling, feeling his energy, that mm. he has some type of aura around him. And when I was 18, uh, I had the uh, privilege to, to meet Lewandowski. Mm. So I was able to get very close to him, get picture with him and, uh, and uh, just feel his uh, aura as well. And uh, I'm telling you, this is all body language. How you carry yourself, what gestures do you have, how you even sit, how mm. you smile, how you move with your eyes. It's all about body language. Mm. Once you conquer your own body language you create this this aura that people just look at you and they are like wow i think correct me if i'm wrong but i think that's a lot to do with how content you are with yourself if you're not content with yourself you're always going to carry some form of resentment and you mean you know if you carry resentment you're going to be tense all the time you're going to be tense you're going to be like, like, like uh, always like oh, why is he looking at me or why is it like your eyes are going to wander around and you're not going to have an open body language. You're not going to be open-minded. You're not going to smile. You're going to be more on the edge. Like, um, so I think that's part of it. Like once you know who you truly are subconsciously and consciously and you're more intentional in how you approach life, okay, and forever growing, you're naturally by, by product, you're going to be content. 
and your body language is going to show it. Because I'm a firm believer if you, like your subconscious mind and your conscious mind is interlinked with your physical body and your physical projection. So it's all interlinked to each other in terms of your value and stuff like that. But you, like, like anything, confidence comes from being competent and competence comes from doing the work that you're avoiding. So mm. it's, as, it's as simple as that. And once you've kind of worked on like regaining control and being in a high emotional state and high emotional intelligence, being controlled subconsciously, being in control of your spiritual uh, um, your journey and stuff like that, and being in control of your physical state, we can't be um a hundred percent or like at an A star level at one aspect and not the other. They're all interlinked with each other. So mm. all the tanks and that that all like linked to each other. Like you can't have one. You can't be a hundred percent physically in shape and fit if you're not in a growth mindset, because you need to push yourself and be in a good mindset to be able to kind of get into a good physical state. And you need to be in an emotional, like intelligent and emotional discipline to be like, yeah, I need to go to the gym. Well, I need to get fit, even in the days that I don't feel like it. Okay. And mm -hmm. yet you need to be in a good spiritual state that you, you may be demotivated and that you're, not seeing the changes, but you still believe in yourself that you're going to get somewhere. That's spiritual belief. So it's all like interlinked to each other. And this is why I was saying like that whole contentment comes from being content in all these subcategories. And then naturally by product, by product you'll show it in the body language. When you look at someone by their body language, you can tell their thoughts? A hundred percent. And I agree with that because I'm, I'm a firm believer that 80% of your communication by the language, if I'm speaking to someone or I'm meeting someone and if they're constantly checking their phone or they turn their phone away or they put their phone in the pocket, now I know where I am as a priority in their life, if that makes sense. How much attention, and that, then you can sense, okay, how much value am I bringing on how much am I a value to these people around me. And you can do this to your loved ones, you can do this to your friends, and you can do this to your colleagues. And if you're not a value to all of them, then you need to level up your game. Like, it's harsh reality, but you're not of a value for them to think, oh, he's worth my time. And me and you both know, like, as a man, the love that you receive from people are con is conditional. You have to bring some value. Like, and whether that's your status, whether that be what you do for you as your career, whether that be um, what value you bring into other people's life. And there's another thing people don't, like aspiring players don't recognise, is how much value am I bringing into the team? Whether that be through my skills, whether that be through my social skills. How many times have you seen players who are dead technically, but because they bring that social spirit and they lift the they lift the um the changing room and they have that social aspect and all the players love them, all the staff love them. That the the club is just extending their one year contract. One year contract. Yeah, like, yeah, he's a good training player. One year contract. You see that so many in, in the Premier League. So many times. Scott Carson. Bro, he's a goalkeeper. But Man City, 41, 42 or something like that, bro. And he's been the third third goalkeeper for Man City. But every interview you listen to about Man City players, everyone says, Scott Carson, what a guy. Scott Carson, what a guy. The guy puts a smile on his face, does the training. He puts around, his arm around young players. Da -da 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 that what value can you bring into the team? What value can you bring into your workplace? What value can you bring to your, your family and your friends? And I, I, I remember I was listening to a podcast. If you don't know what value you bring, call your friends or someone that you're close to at stupid times, like at 2 a.m. or 1 a.m., call them and be like, it's an emergency. Call them, okay? Hey, if they pick up, that's a good sign, okay? Because they're there for you all the time. And B, 
question them and be like, why are you my friend? What what makes you think that I'm your good friend? What value do I bring? If someone can't tell you that, <laughs> you're just a convenience, if that makes sense. It's uncomfortable. I understand that. But how are you going to know if you don't ask? Especially if you're not self-aware. So that's one way you can build awareness as well. So you have to be very intentional with your life in order to create value as a person. After being in so many dressing rooms, I, uh, I, I can identify who's the best player on the team. And you can tell it by how he's entering the dressing room. Mm. Once a best player in the team is entering the dressing room, he's not giving you his hand like this. He's giving you the firm handshake. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that he's the best player in the team because he has this energy around him that is just, just screaming confidence. So mm. uh, I have a challenge to people to next time they enter any room, preferably if they just go to to dressing room in their teams, to act like a best player on the team, to come mm. inside the room and give everyone firm handshakes, mm. and see how this session will, uh, how the session later will uh, will develop. But be mindful. At what stage do you do it at? Because if you do it as a trialist. People will not like it because they'll be like, who, who do you think you are? Unless you can back it and you have a firm belief in yourself, okay, do it. But if you're thinking, I don't know who the manager is, I don't know who the captain, blah, 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 but feel it out first and then do it. Then once you've established your territory, then do it. I don't know if you read the book, 48 Laws of Power. Yeah, it's, a, it's more to do with that in terms of like you don't want to battle the egos once you've kind of established yourself and like you said establish yourself um show your value um you've earned the trust and the respect of everyone then you can demand that back in return next thing a person can do to increase their value would be to improve their vocabulary the things you say have big uh, impact on other people in terms of uh, presenting your value so if you're the guy that is, is all the time like, ah, oh, fuck this shit, ah, oh, fuck me, ah, oh, blah, blah, blah. Then you don't present high value. But if you use rich language, you actually present higher value. Mm -hmm. Of course, it, it depends on uh, which room you are in. But uh, by using rich language, you can dominate other person in the conversation. And it's funny because people that use the rich language are people that associated with high status people and the people that they surround themselves with, which could be a good um, indicator of who I should talk to and who I shouldn't, if that makes sense. That's one way you can eliminate who you should um, integrate into your say and who you shouldn't. So if a person like is a hood talk all the time, hood mm. talk, hood talk, hood talk, it gets boring after a while. So you can keep him more of like an acquaintance or um, a guy that you can do chill stuff with once in a blue moon type of thing. But in other times, we're in terms of like a business or in terms of networking, in terms of um, advice, then they the type of people that you want to have around you because they carry so much power in terms of from, from their network and to people that they know. Next uh, next thing you can do to increase your value is to simply fix your posture. It's how you sit, how you walk. If you walk with your shoulders slouched slouch forward, you look down, you don't mm. present high value. Don't call me a psychopath, but I have a test uh, that I do uh, often on people. When I walk uh, one direction and the other person is going the opposite direction, I look, uh, look in their eyes and see their reaction, what they would do. And 95% uh, of the time, the other person is just looking down. Mm -hmm. Then I, I feel like I won. So like mm -hmm. anytime I cross cross uh, pass with somebody, I'm having like a eye competition. And uh, I can uh, easily tell if somebody is confident in themselves or not. If I walk by a confident person, he will look me straight into the eyes or he will just look, not even look at me, but he will look straight. Mm -hmm. If a person is uh, not confident in themselves, they will just mm -hmm. look at you and then they will do, mm -hmm. look down mm -hmm. every, every time. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting, many people, bodybuilders, 
people mm. that are uh, cocky, you mm. know, the, the, the alcoholics, the, the, you know, the party people, every single one of them looks down. Mm. <laughs> Don't do that in the hood. <laughs> Shit, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 in the hood, no. What you looking at, man? <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> Wanna fight that? Oh, yeah. bro, long day, bro. Ten toes. Nah, bro, I live in Oslo, so that's why I'm saying that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you live in Oslo, bro. That's different, uh, <laughs> different caliber of status, bro. Mm. But bro, you can do this in the gym. Out. Yeah, you can do this in the gym, hundred percent. But just the the only area I wouldn't do is the hood. You just don't do that. <laughs> For your own safety, <laughs> don't do yeah. that. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry for breaking the podcast. Just one announcement, okay? Check out our channels on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, Play by Play Podcast. And it goes back to um, that's because I don't think they're of value. It's as simple as that. Um, and part of that is because you can't, you can't be of value if you're stagnant or you've not made changes in your life. It's just. It's like your body and and nature screams adaptation and evolution. That's just the laws of life. And if you're not, then you're doing your lineage a disservice, your bloodline a disservice. Look how much, look how much changes and um, hostility and struggle your past generation had to go through to get us to where we are. And I feel like the last 50 years we've kind of plateaued from a personal development, from a um from a struggle development, from a, from all aspects really. We've hardly developed as a society and as a community. If anything, we've disintegrated as a community. And that's because everyone's to themselves rather than them thinking, okay. How can I bring value to the community? How can I bring value into myself? How can I in, in, integrate value into my loved ones and my family? No one cares. Everyone's to themselves. Everyone just cares about their own interests. And that in itself does a disservice. Because I was reading a book one time and I was saying, life is all about how you can serve others. Because by serving others, you end up serving yourself. True. And I feel like because the society has become so isolated, everyone's so separated from each other, everyone is kind of like like a walking zombie. No one's authentic. No one is genuine. I'm talking for the general population. I'm not saying everyone's like that, but for the majority, um, everyone's become um, ungenuine and not authentic. And the best thing you can do in terms of to increase your value, become authentic and genuine yourself. And I promise you, you'll attract those people as well because you'll have the ability to kind of pick out who's not genuine, who's not. But how can you do that if you're not one yourself? And in order to do that, you have to be true to yourself. In order to be true to yourself, you have to deep delve deep into your subconscious mind, deep in, into your conscious mind be intentional with life, check your surroundings, have better awareness, and then and only then you'll be content. And it's all like it's all connected, it's all interlinked. Life is simple, complicated by humans. Next thing you can do to increase your value is uh, to improve your physique. But I'm not saying uh, go uh, and be a bodybuilder. I'm saying don't have a belly, have a six pack. You know, six pack can mm. can can. Uh, Put your value higher so uh, eat healthy train improve a physique that commands the respect mm -hmm. because uh, if you went through hard trainings went to high hard dieting it shows to people that you went through something to achieve this and correct me if i'm wrong you're never going to be a high value person if you're uh, if you're always pleasure seeking You'll always seek for short-term pleasure. You'll always seek for instant gratification. You're never going to be a person of value because you can't seem to understand or want your body or your mind to go through struggle. But what's value without hardship and struggle? 
because nothing that's worth having comes easy. This is why people don't feel themselves as valued because they didn't do anything hard to make them feel, feel like a diamond. Pressure make diamond. Jamin. It's a perfect moment now to to say uh, what happened on the Andrew Huberman podcast with uh, David Goggins. Uh, he said yeah. that there is a part in your brain that gets larger with the uh, with the things you go through. Mm. So, like the more hard things you go through, this part of the brain is getting larger. And mm. it's, it's been shown that the people that went through a lot have this part much larger than the people that has been seeking pleasure all, all their life. And that's the that's what gives you longevity, is the ability to do something that you that you dislike and is challenging. But this is what I mean by like having the emotional immaturity and the spiritual belief, self-belief to keep going, to keep going and keep pushing and keep pushing. Because I'm a firm believer that this life is a test. This life, so that you're gonna be going through trials and tribulations. And the last thing I want is for the afterlife where it comes to day judgment and God's telling me, What have you done? You've done nothing. That's the worst thing, bro. And then he goes, This is what you could have done. This is what you could have been. And look at you. Go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the worst thing. Bro, like, you're thinking, oh, so I had the potential to be like that. Mm. I had the potential to do stuff in my life, and I didn't, do you know what I mean? All because of my own choices. It's no one's fault but mine, do you know what I mean? So, like, having that feeling in my mind kind of makes it go, like, do you know what, keep going. Do you know what, keep going. Do you know what, keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. And obviously, adapt as you go along, but keep keep going. Keep making changes as you go along as well. Next thing you can do to increase your value is to improve your dress code. And I'm not saying this because I'm selling clothes, but uh, it literally it is like that. The clothes that you wear, it's a, it's like a package uh, in a Christmas present. Mm-hmm. So you need to you need to look nice. You need to have the nice clothes. You you cannot have holes in your clothes. Also, one thing people are not aware of: your clothes are getting worn out. So it's many times uh, people are using the same clothes after five years, but mm-hmm. you need to change your wardrobe. You need to okay. exchange the clothes you had before to, to the new ones because they mm-hmm. just, just get uh, overwashed. Well, this goes back to um, self-respect, how you view yourself, how much value you, you think you are. But basically, if you, if you think you're a high value, you think I am the guy. Look at like, not in a cocky way, but like, and like in terms of a confidence way. And this is what I mean. You're investing yourself in your wardrobe in the thing because you think I'm I am worthy of it. I am I am a person of value, so I deserve to, to be kind of like representing in, in, in that way through my body language as well and through my my exterior looks as well. Um so it goes back to your self respect and that's very highly interlinked with your value. A few years ago when I lived in uh, Liverpool, I was in the gym. It was two people that entered the dressing room. It was uh, some Joe Schmo that, that just finished his workout and it was some uh, some basketball player or some, some, like you could tell that he was an athlete. Yeah. And uh, Joe Schmo just took his, his things from the, from the locker and went out. But uh, the basketball player went to the shower, did his hair put on perfume, put on moisturizer, and he just took care, took took his, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes more of his life just to present mm-hmm. himself better. And you could mm-hmm. instantly say that this guy has higher value than the Josh Mo. Yeah, so it's about how you smell as well. Don't, don't oh, be stinky. Oh. No, I've took care of that. The last two years, I've took care of that. People being like, what's that? I'd be like, oh, what's that you got? Um, oh, so nice. Uh, smelling like Arab money. I've been, mean, you know that. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> so obviously, I've like, been to Dubai, I've been there, I've been there. And I'm like, what's that smell? Like, yeah, yeah, try this, brother. Try this. Oh, this is strong. And he goes, yeah, yeah, it's made of oil. So alcohol um, it evaporates. Oil stays in the skin. I think, yeah, this is it. Yeah, bro, you spray it a couple of times or you put it on there like that. Right, yeah? Bro, it's uh, two, three days, you still smell of it. Even if you had a shower, you still smell of it. It's, bro, but like, if you take 
and like if you go above and beyond that like, people are going to recognize it's just because i know and i've been there that's why i know when i've been there to it trust me and if you wanna if you wanna know a few hit me on the dm and also yeah don't move. next thing you can do to increase your value is to have experiences to put yourself in uncomfortable situations it was uh, one time I heard Andrew Tate saying uh, that he got questioned by by some uh, some guy about that he has nothing to talk about, and what can he do? And then he said, uh, take a train in Siberia and and uh, go from one part of Russia to the other part. And then the guy said, uh, yeah, but what if I get killed? And then he's saying, exactly, exactly, that's the story. Maybe you die, maybe not. You will have a story mm. to tell. <laughs> It's true, like, and part of that, right, like, imagine, like, you've got grandkids or you've got, like, and you've got no story to tell them. You're like, oh, you're a bum, do you know what I mean? Honestly, you've got no story to tell them. They won't be like, oh, wow, they won't be in awe looking at you, do you know what I mean? They won't, uh, like, I don't, they'll just be like, what the, what's this? Yeah, just, like, definitely have some stories to tell. Whether that be an um, enjoyable experience, whether it be a dangerous experience, whether that be anything. Because what's, uh, what's value without experience? What's value without any lesson learned? What's value without um, any hardship or any struggles that you went through? It's just, it, you become unvalued. Wow, that was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one.